You remember our index story. We have a bunch of kids. We let them run 100 meter on the track and we are trying to select the kids that are the best. We pick an index of kids, we call it the big kid index, and now we have one task. You can bet on one or two or several of those kids, and if you're better than the entire group of kids, you have beaten the big kid index. If you're worse, you underperform. Now the big question is, will a selection of kids be better than the whole group of kids together, or will it be worse? And it's very obvious that if you select many, many, many times, the average of the selection must be exactly the same as the group itself. It's not possible by merely picking kids out of the big kid index, you'll get a better average if you do it many, many times than the big kid index itself. It's not possible that by purely selecting kids that they actually run faster than if they had not been selected. Now, the same actually applies to stocks. If you have a group of stock, which is the stock's index, and you start to select stocks out of that through a professional asset manager, for instance, then it's not possible that on average you're better than the index itself. You must have, on average, the same return as the index itself. The only difference is the cost of actively picking stocks is actually higher than just you know, buying the stocks and holding them as they are in the index. So the only difference between wealth management that selects stocks and an index that holds all the stocks are actually costs. And that's the only reason why asset managers on average must perform worse than an index. There's no other reason why an index should be better than the average of all wealth managers. An important thing to remember I wish you good luck with your own investing.